a lot of what I'm working on now are these pieces that are based on traditional Islamic tile patterns. And I just love the repeating nature of the geometry and the fact that in ancient times, and even today, these are done with a straight edge and a compass and a pencil. And I think that's why I like them, that they, the sense of order that they bring in doing these. All of these designs are traditional, as I mentioned, can be found in various places around the world. In this country, we tend to use tessellated patterns in quilts and quilting, whereas more in the, uh, in the Islamic world, they use them in architecture. I find it very meditative to draw the designs by hand, and then I carve them into the wax, into the encaustic, and then I will rub oil paint or oil stick into the design, or sometimes I'll add more encaustic and scrape back to reveal the design. This one I think I'm going to stick with the pigment stick after the design is completely carved. Now I'm rubbing oil stick, which is oil paint, and some beeswax into the marks that I've carved into the piece. And the surface will get rubbed down and then the color will remain in the, uh, in the design. Try to get the oil stick in, in all of the little crevices. I'm using a little solvent, a little Gamsol, to rub the uh, excess pigment off of the surface of the work and leave the pigment behind in the design work. These are the soft pastels, pan pastels, that I use on the surface. This one is a German silver. Just heating it enough to fuse that pastel metallic pigment into the wax surface without ruining all the lines I spent so much time carving. And I know when it's done, when it's fused, when there's a slight sheen on the surface from the heat. So this is encaustic mediums. It's beeswax and damar resin with no pigment added to it. It has to be melted on a hot pallet. This is a pancake griddle. It melts at about 160, 175 degrees. And I use it at about 180 degrees. And I use the medium without any pigment to build up layers to carve into. I generally build up about eight to ten layers before I start to carve. Use a clay tool designed for ceramics. Scrape down the, the high edges where the wax tends to accumulate. texture to this one section of the panel. And that's going to give me some texture in there that I'm going to then rub some oil pigment into. Sometimes if I just need a little bit of paint, I'll melt it directly on the palette instead of melting an entire tin of paint. This is a nice graphite. It's got a little bit of a metallic sheen in it and only natural bristle brushes. Synthetics are going to melt on the palette. So all the patterns that tessellate, that fit together with no background in them, are either squares or hexagons or equilateral triangles. So all of the patterns I work with start with either a square or a hexagon. 
I don't work that much with triangles. I draw all of the background lines that go into making up the patterns by hand. There's a book I got that has a lot of the patterns that I use in it and how to draw all of them. Eric Brugge wrote it. He's a Islamic design scholar, lives in England. And he's got recipes basically for about 12 patterns in his book and I use a lot of those. I mentioned that I started off as a printmaker, so this is an encaustic monoprint. So the uh, wax is melted on a metal printing plate and then transferred to the paper by hand, not using a press. And this particular uh, monoprint is used for the background, and on top of it is a linoleum cut oil block print. Uh, carving linoleum is not that much different from carving wax. So I carved linoleum and uh, used oil inks to print on top of of the encaustic monoprint. 